It's Dr. Yu with the Calgary Guide video series. This time we're going to do a topic episode about peptic ulcer disease, pathogenesis, and clinical findings. There are three main groups of causes for peptic ulcer disease. The first is H. pylori, a gram-negative rod bacterium found in the stomach. The second are NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. The third group consists of various rarer causes of peptic ulcer disease, including ischemia of the GI tract, Zollinger-Ellison syndrome, which leads to increased acid secretion due to a gastrin-producing tumor, stress in the ICU setting, Crohn's disease, and cancer, specifically adenocarcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, and lymphoma, which affect the GI tract. For H. pylori, the mechanism of it causing peptic ulcers is not very well understood. However, we believe that it's because of the toxins released by the bacteria, leading to an inflammatory response, which inhibits the detection of hydrogen ions by cells in the gastric antrum, leading to the over-secretion of hydrogen ions. The second main cause of peptic ulcer disease, NSAIDs, includes the use of aspirin, ASA, as well as other antiplatelet agents. NSAIDs cause the inhibition of an enzyme called COX-1, which in turn increases the production of hydrogen ion, as well as reduces the production of gastric mucus. In addition, NSAIDs themselves are directly toxic to gastric epithelial cells. Overall, these three main groups of peptic ulcer disease causes lead to an imbalance between the gastroprotective factors and injurious substances that affect the gastric mucosa. Specifically, the amount of gastroprotective factors decrease and the number of mucosal injurious substances increase. In terms of gastroprotective factors, the mucus, which is the barrier between the gastric cells and hydrochloric acid, is reduced. Blood flow, which removes hydrogen ions and supports mucosal cells in their growth and function, is also reduced. Epithelial cells, creating a physical barrier as well as a bicarb buffer between the cells and the hydrochloric acid in the stomach, are damaged and prostaglandins, which function in reduction of hydrogen ion secretion, as well as increased mucus production, is also reduced. On the other side of the scale, we have an increase in the amount of substances that injure the gastric mucosa. This includes an increase in the production of hydrochloric acid, caused by gastrin, histamine, acetylcholine, which all promote acid secretion by the parietal cells. Toxins, for example drugs like NSAIDs, can be directly toxic to gastric epithelial cells, there can also be drugs that reduce the platelet adhesion and its ability to form a platelet plug, leading to easier bleeding. The combination of reduced gastroprotective factors and increased substances that injure the gastric mucosa lead to the overall erosion of the gastric mucosa. When the erosion proceeds into the blood vessels, that leads to bleeding into the stomach or bleeding into the esophagus. Bleeding into the stomach results in the blood passing through the GI tract which becomes oxidized by the hydrochloric acid and digested. Once it goes through the entire GI tract, that blood comes out as melina, black, tarry, foul-smelling stool. Once the blood gets oxidized by the hydrochloric acid but moves back into the esophagus and is vomited out, that results in coffee ground emesis. In addition, bleeding into the esophagus can lead to the blood being directly vomited out, otherwise known as hematemesis. Erosion of the gastric mucosa also irritates the somatic nerves that innervate the stomach. These are the T5 to T8 dermatomes. This will result in a sensation of dyspepsia or epigastric pain. This also will result in a sensation of nausea. And that's it for an overview of the pathogenesis and clinical findings of peptic ulcer disease. If you found this quick and concise summary of this medical topic useful, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel for more quick and handy summaries about pathophysiology from the Calgary Guide to Understanding Disease. Thanks everybody, and see you in the next video.